Hello everyone, this is Smitha and welcome back to another video. The coronavirus has been all over the news. Tens of thousands of people have been infected by the disease and millions of people have been affected in some shape or form. As you can imagine, this has generated a huge amount of data. And as data scientists, it would be really cool to see if we could use data science to predict how far the virus could spread when it could stop and if it has even reached its peak yet. What started off as a few controlled cases in Wuhan itself has now spread worldwide. 70,000 people have actually been infected by the disease itself, most of them are from China, and 1,700 people have actually lost their lives to this disease. In fact, hundreds of millions of people have actually been immobilized by this disease and to put that into perspective, 10% of the world right now is under some form of quarantine. As you can imagine, this is bound to have huge consequences for the entire world. What's even more unsettling is that the coronavirus does not seem to show any signs of stopping anytime soon. Let's take a look at the graph which shows the number of daily confirmed cases. So let's look at this graph which shows the daily uh, new number of cases of infected people. So this graph has been compiled by the Johns Hopkins University and as you can see uh, there has been a steady uptick in the number of cases daily. In the initial couple of days, it has remained uh, below 1,000, but after uh, January 24th, it has stayed above 1,000. And the anomaly in this graph, as you can see, is on February 13th, when the daily number of cases actually reached above 15,000. The reason being was that on that day, China actually changed the way it was uh, confirming if someone had the disease or not. When it comes to modeling infectious diseases like the coronavirus, SARS, or even things like the measles, it is extremely useful to use something called the SIR model, which stands for the Susceptible, Infected, and Removed model. So what it actually does it, it, is that it looks at the number of people who are susceptible to the disease, the number of people who have been infected by the disease, and those who have been removed from the disease. And when we're talking about the people who have been removed from the disease, we're specifically referring to the people who have perhaps gotten the disease but have recovered from it, or if they have been quarantined so that they are away and they're not able to spread the disease further, and also those who have actually passed away from the disease. So to test out the SIR model, I will be making use of the Maple Cloud software. For those of you guys who want to test it out as well, I will leave a link in the description box below. So let's get into it. So as you can see, if I were to increase the transmission rate, uh, the rate of infection basically, the number of people being infected actually increases as well. And the, the rate at which uh, people are being susceptible to the disease actually increases as well. Meanwhile, if I were to increase the rate of removal of the people from uh, the infectious area, the number of people being infected actually decreases, while the rate of people being recovered actually increases as well. So now that you guys have a basic understanding of how the SIR model works, let's actually use real world data of uh, the number of people being infected daily with the coronavirus and let's try to predict the number of people who are going to be infected in the future. Um, if, for those of you guys who are interested in the technical details behind this, I'm going to link the code in the description box below, so be sure to check it out. So the SIR model actually predicts that within the next 100 days, the total number of people to be infected with the coronavirus could reach up to 150,000. And this uh, value is actually based on a lower transmission rate value. So this is actually a really conservative estimate. In addition to that, it also predicts that within the next 200 days, we could actually see a significant drop in the number of people uh, who are going to be infected with the coronavirus. So this is actually a really positive uh, prediction. Now let's look at the worst possible case scenario that the SIR model predicts. So it actually predicts that 
In the next 30 to 100 days, the total number of people who could be infected with the coronavirus could reach up to 6 million. Now that is a staggering number, but we have to remember that this is actually the worst possible case scenario. So now that we've looked at both the conservative estimate and also the worst case scenario, we know that within the next 100 days, the total number of people being infected with the coronavirus could actually range from 150,000 to about 6 million. But I have to remind you guys that the SIR model is not perfect. It comes with its own set of limitations. For instance, it assumes that the transmission rate is constant, which in real life is not the case. And also it assumes that every individual in the population behaves in the same way. So it assumes that everyone recovers in the same rate, which is also not the case in real life. Well guys, that was the video for today. If you enjoyed it, like and comment in the comment section below. And if you're interested in more data science and machine learning videos, be sure to subscribe as well. And see you guys next time.